Hello and welcome to our presentation on the NIH Biosketch Changes for 2025. My name is Robin Faria and I'm the director of the Grant Submission Unit for the UCLA CTSI. Today I'm going to go through a high-level overview of the major changes coming down the pike for 2025. As of today's recording, we're still awaiting final information and forms from the NIH on the Forms I changes specifically for Biosketches. But since we know big changes are coming, I thought it'd be helpful to walk through them together. As always, please note that this presentation is meant to be an informative interpretation of NIH's guidelines, but should not be used to replace those guidelines and may have changed since the last time this video was posted. So be sure to check NIH's SF424 guidelines and the specific instructions within your funding opportunity announcement. Based on the NIH's notice from July of 2024, I'm going to cover what I see as the three major changes you need to be aware of for NIH applications on or after May 25th, 2025, specifically for biosketches. Please note that this aligns with, but does not start with the other forms I changes that'll apply for applications on or after January 25th, 2025. For biosketches, NIH has given us a little additional time. So, the three major changes include required use of the common form, the required use of ScienceEV to build that common form, and the addition of a new document called the Biosketch Supplement. First up is the Biosketch Common Form. So what is the common form? The Biosketch Common Form is just the standard form that's typically used for all of your federally funded research. So those of you who are familiar with NSF applications, you'll recognize this as the NSF Biosketch, but it's used by other federal awarding agencies as well. Unlike the current NIH Biosketch, the common form doesn't have a page limit, but each agency may apply their own guidelines to this form. The common form looks somewhat similar to those of you that are familiar with the current or old NIH Biosketch format with identifying information at the top, a grid for your education and training called professional preparation here, and sections for appointments and positions and products, otherwise known as publications. The second big change is that NIH will now require the use of ScienceEV to build your biosketch. So let's dive into that a little bit. ScienceEV stands for Science Experts Network Curriculum Vitae. The system allows you to build your biosketch through your ERA Commons ID login allows you to create multiple biosketches so you can have an NSF version, an NIH version, multiple NIH versions. If you have an administrator, they can be assigned as delegates to help edit your biosketch in the system. And publications are automatically linked to my bibliography and or your ORCID ID so that you don't have to manually put them in. If you're unfamiliar with Science if you've never used it, NIH has some great tutorials that are available online for getting you started, how to edit things once you're in the system. To dive a little further into the logistics of using Science EV, some of the components must be manually added, but some could be pulled from other sources, as I mentioned earlier. So, for instance, your identifying information, you know, um, your name, your title, organization, location, those are automatically pulled in from your ORCID ID. Professional Preparation, which is your education and training, must add that manually. Appointments and positions also have to add that manually. Products or publications, those you must pull from my bibliography and or ORCID. So a little bit mixture of some manual and some auto ads. The third major change coming is the addition of a new document that's called the Biosketch Supplement. So we'll spend some time diving into this. As you may have noticed when we were reviewing the common form, a few key components of the NIH Biosketch were missing. So the NIH Biosketch supplement will now include those components. So that includes the personal statement, uh, honors and awards, and contribution to science. Again, as of this recording, NIH has not issued the template or updated guidelines on the supplemental form, but has indicated that these will be published before the policy is implemented for applications on or after May 25th, 2025. So once it's been published, we'll reissue this presentation with any updated information. But for right now, our assumption is that the supplement will largely look like the old Biosketch template for these sections. Some other reminders before we close out. While this presentation focuses solely on the NIH Biosketch, 
Please note that much of the information applies to the other support information as well. So that includes the requirement to use the comment form for other support and to build it within Science EV. Additionally, as again, as mentioned earlier, the Biosketch supplement form and instructions haven't been issued at the time of this recording, but will be issued sometime before that May 25th, 2025 implementation date, and we'll update our records accordingly. And lastly, it's a great time to plan ahead. So while we don't have full information, we have enough to begin thinking about how to prep for the, these new changes. So what does planning ahead look like? Firstly, you want to log into your ERA Commons account through my, my NCBI, ensure that your ORCID ID is linked. If you don't have one or you're not sure if you have an ORCID ID, make sure that you obtain one. Uh, in terms of working within Science EV, although the templates are not up to date, you can begin entering some of the standard information, especially the stuff that has to be entered manually, including professional preparation, contribution to science, and honors. All those things that we know we'll need to add, you can start entering the content right now and worry about the formatting later. And the last thing is to make sure that your My Bibliography is up to date. So again, one of the great things about Science EV is its ability to draw in your publications from other sources, but that only works if your My Bibliography is up to date. So working on that early can help save some headache down the line. Lastly, here's the list of key resources that I've referenced throughout the presentation, including our own GSU website, where we'll keep up to date guidance on the NIH bias sketches as they come out, the common forum rules and guidelines for more deep dive into the requirements, a link to accessing Science EV, and from the NIH, a high level summary of the major changes affecting NIH applications for 2025, including the specific biosketch rules that we've explored today. These resources are also going to be available on the GSU website in case you need to access them in the future as well. I want to thank you for attending today's presentation. For UCLA and UCLA CTSI partner sites, please feel free to reach out and contact the grant submission unit at the information listed below for any additional guidance, support, and help that you may need with your biosketches. And good luck. <laughs>